All right, here are the top three exercises that we would do if you're dealing with a low lumbar disc protrusion, okay? Stenosis, which we'll explain, as well as an annular tear and then general disc degeneration. So let's break that down. That's a lot of things all at once. Jake, first let's go through what a disc protrusion looks like, and then we'll go and talk about the, uh, the stenosis, the annular tear, and then lastly the, disc degener or the, the general degeneration of the, of the joint and uh, disc space. Okay, so starting with the disc protrusion here, you have the disc which is found within uh, or in between the two bones, right? So this could be like L4 and L5. You've got the outer ring here, which is the netting, and then the inner jelly-like material, which is this little piece that I'm kind of bulging out right there or protruding out. You can get that protrusion into that joint space there where you have like a slight bulge that can decrease the, the space for that nerve root down here and restrict that motion you have in those joints because that tissue is in the way. So that would be what a disc protrusion is. Usually those occur in one direction and out to the side. Posterior so, lateral. Yeah, posterior lateral, lateral would be the most common. Usually they're most irritated by flexion or like flexion and rotating, bent over position, sitting, bending, lifting, anything like sometimes, that can irritate Sometimes it. with load going backwards or going backwards, you know, with when body weight and gravity. It. And they also, so I'm gonna skip past the stenosis just to talk about okay. the annular tear. Yes. Because those are commonly gonna be seen together. So in order for that inner, that, that annulus, the inside of the disc, to escape, right, that, so the annular wall is what's protect, sorry, I said the wrong word. The annular wall protects the nucleus on the inside. So in order for that nucleus to escape the annulus, there has to be um, either a, a bulge or that, that is pushing out, or there's actually a tear in that, in that wall. And so that tear then allows the nucleus to sneak out, and that's what's causing that protrusion. So hand, those tend to go, go hand in hand. hand. Yeah. If there's an annular tear, there's most likely also some kind of protrusion or at least the ability for that nuclear material to escape that, yeah, the, the, the yeah, the, um, that, that structure has been compromised yep. with that annular. So the annular tear itself can cause a lot of symptoms, including you know, constant lower back pain with some um, referring out to the like lateral hip, lower back, upper buttock, because the, remember the outer third of that, that annular wall there, that disc is highly innervated. So there's a lot of nerve endings there, it hurts. The inner two thirds where the nucleus moves around is not. So you won't feel anything until it, until it pushes or escapes. Yep. I was gonna say, this is also why people will be like, oh yeah, all I did was like bend over at the sink. All of a sudden you're getting that searing back pain. Yeah, it doesn't have to well, be anything yeah, big at all. You're probably pressing that nucleus out into that radial tear over and over and over time. Finally, you hit that outer third where you actually have nerve roots that can uh, send signals of pain to the brain. Then and then it. you feel it, yeah. yeah. So then let's go over, so let's go over the other two. So stenosis and degenerative disc disease or, or degenerative joint disease kind of go hand in hand as well. Because yeah. those two things are more of a over time process. Yeah. So kind of just kind of show that, you know, there's, there's yep. two kinds of stenosis. There's a central canal and then a peripheral. But for this example, we'll let's talk about the peripheral. Yeah. So peripheral, you have this nice big joint space right through here where that nerve root comes out. Stenosis literally just means narrowing or making a smaller hole. So you can have that through disc degeneration where you actually get loss of disc height and you can see that space narrowing where that nerve root is. Or when you have something like a protrusion, you get that little slight protrusion out into that joint space and that's irritating that nerve root because now that nerve root does not have enough room to move around. Or you can get a combination of both. So some, some bone growth over time, which again is a, is a natural, um, it's um, naturally occurring aging. as we age. So even if you had no pain, took a picture of that, a lot of people are gonna have you know, a stenosis, but if there's still enough room, it's not a big deal. The problem that happens is when there's already a little bit of a narrowing and then you introduce another space occupier, right? So the bone is already narrowing the space and that, that nerve root is already kind of taking, a, it's not, not a lot of space, but enough. And then the protrusion adds more, adds more um, stuff into the area. Now there's not enough space irritating the nerve root. So those are the things that all you, could, you may see on a scan. Let's go back to the top. What are we gonna do when we assess this, how are we gonna help people and give them some exercises and some movements to understand if this is changeable or how to fix this thing? Yeah, so I mean, if we went through an assessment, we would obviously run you through a bunch of different directions and test to figure out what's gonna benefit you the most. Uh, for the sake of this video, do you just wanna go with what's most common? Let's go with most, what's most, most common, especially okay. if you feel like, you know, you fall into this group of, you know, bending worse, sitting worse, rising out of sitting worse. Yep. But if I'm up, moving around, walking around, being a little bit more active, um, in general, better, or lying down, taking some, you know, taking some some load off, in general, better. Yeah. So we would, you know, that's going to fall into a category, um, especially if you have, again, this category would be 
you know, unilateral, um, so pain just on one side, um, back, outer side of the hip, maybe into the upper leg or, or upper uh, calf. Yep. Okay. So in this case, for, for a movement we would demonstrate on that would be something like, I'll just demonstrate yep. standing yep. extension here yep. since we've got this. Would just be extending that low back as far as you can, breathing out and going a little bit further. This is just trying to reduce that soft tissue protrusion that we kind of discussed earlier. Get that out of the joint space so we can move freely and reduce the pain and regain motion. More, more likely than not, we would do that in lying yeah, first. And so that would look like what Jake was just doing there. He'd, you'd be on your stomach this way, hands under your shoulders, and press the chest and shoulders up, and then coming back down. So you're going to work into extension initially because it's, it's part of the assessment process. So it really, you have to try it first to see what are the results, what are the mechanical yeah. cause and effect. I mean, when you stand back up, even if it's hard to do, but when you stand back up, is the pain less in the leg? Yeah. Do you feel like you're moving freer um, or, the, or the pain is changing at all? That would be the, the first thing we would try because we've got to know what the result is. If better, keep going. If worse, try again, again to see. Yeah. But then, then after that, if it still continues to know, definitely worse, definitely worse in the leg, okay, then, then we would actually change and go uh, knees to chest or flexion. Uh, it would be the next motion. But there, there's, there's a cascade of things that have to happen in order for us to change direction. But again, for the sake of this video, you always want to try that one first yep. and see what happens. It's going to help way more than it's not going to help. It's yep. going to be way more beneficial than, 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 the other, than the other way. So Agreed. number two, what do you think? Yeah, we'll do some like lower level core work. So this is going to be mostly just resisting movement. So you can do something like um, a plank, a dead bug position where you're laying on your back with your legs elevated to 90 degrees and just doing small holds. You don't have to get yep. too aggressive with this. Maybe just some really low level marching in supine, so yep. laying on your back, tight in the stomach, just one That's knee up and then touch the heel, next knee up, touch the heel, nice and easy, controlled. Yep, and again, just retest how you move in your, whatever test you found uh, in the beginning that turn on the pain, test that afterwards and see if you're gaining or losing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, from then, just more consistent movement. Don't sit down and do nothing. Don't go lay in a bed and not do anything. Don't go sit on the couch for hours at a time, mm -hmm. watch TV and just take meds and hope that it works and then get up and you're going to be stuff again. Yeah. Keep moving, keep walking. Walking is usually going to be good. You need to hydrate the discs. Uh, the discs get their nutrition through movement. So when you're up and walking around, you're constantly loading those and they act like a sponge. So they're feeding into that uh, oxygen and blood and nutrients that they need. So you need to keep moving to uh, milk that into the disc. Mm -hmm. So in general, activity. Pick yeah. an activity. Doesn't we like matter. walking. could be swimming. It could be, um, uh, yeah, biking. I mean, something. Just you need, to, you need to move, but stay. I guess the bonus would be the posture. So yeah. when sitting, use a lumbar roll. Set your hips all the way to the back. Sit tall. Don't sit in a, a, a recliner or a lazy boy or a soft couch. It'll feel better at first, but it won't serve you long term. When you go to rise again, you'll be stuck. It'll be very difficult to get up. So you've got to sit in a nice stiff back chair. Over-exaggerate the, the, the tallness or the straightness in the spine. Uh, stay moving. Number one, work into extension. Number two, some low-level uh, core work. Those three things right off the bat should get you a lot of benefit right off the bat. If yeah. it's something that's not quite right, there's still a, a hitch or a, um, a problem. That's some further testing yeah. needed. Let us yeah. know, and, we'll, and we can always give you some more information on how to, how to fix that the rest of the way.